that conferred second class citizenship on blacks in the last century. And I was really proud to be an eagle when the Senate voted unanimously to condemn HB2 and call for its repeal. So at this point, I have to mention the work done to make MCCU a more welcoming and supportive uh, campus for LGBT students. I remember a time in the early 2000s when a gay student came to me, a very bright student, a chancellor's scholar with a full four year scholarship. He came to me at the end of his freshman year and he said, Dr. Jolly, I'm transferring to the University of Maryland because it is just too hard to be gay at NCCU. Since then, a lot of progress has been made. And early on, quite frankly, the progress was not because of faculty and administration. It was because of the students, the LGBT students and their allies, who would not deny who they are, who would not hide, who would not remain silent. And then, about seven or eight years ago, along came Tia Doxy. The most amazing ally the LGBT community could hope for. She agreed to help me advise, uh, co-advise uh, Project of Colors, our LGBT student organization that Tia talked about. And she brought new energy, insight, and creativity to that work. And she also brought lofty ambitions for our community. She is the reason that NCCU was the second historically black university in the country to have an LGBTA center. And the first HBCU to have a lavender graduation ceremony. These will always be her legacy. But this past year, our LGBTA Center Coordinator, Janice McNally, with great support from Assistant Vice Chancellor Anita Walton, took services and support for LGBT students to a new level. And today we've got a solid core of faculty and staff to continue this work. So now, and we're getting close to the end, I promise. I want to thank three groups of people for the great room that I've had here. First, there are the administrative staff who have made my life so much easier and who do so much to keep the trains running around here. Our past and present department administrative assistants, Lois Pettiford,
So bear with me as I end this meandering reflection in a somewhat cliché and flippant way. Lists. I love lists. So we're going to start with the top five things I will not miss about MC. <laughs> Number five, the nightmare of online travel authorization and reimbursement. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, the temperature in the deep freeze of my office. <laughs> Number three, on the flip side, four-hour graduation ceremonies in black robes in the blazing sun. <laughs> Number two, for this Scotsman, who has refused to buy an MCC parking decal since they tripled the price 10 years ago to pay for the damn parking deck, which is clear on the other side of campus, by the way, the constant threat of parking tickets. And number one, grading. that you got from me on your work. And I know sometimes there was more feedback than there was work. <laughs> and for that, I have to give a shout out to my teacher and dissertation uh, chair, Joanna Earp. All that feedback, it may have been a labor of love, but it was a labor. <laughs> and because of it, over the years, I missed a lot of good TV. <laughs> okay, and now the seven things that I will miss dearly. Belinda Jones' ever-present and infectious laugh. And Tanya Bass's irres irrepressible spirit. Laverne Reed's amazing wardrobe. <laughs> In 17 years, I don't think I've ever seen her wear the same outfit. <laughs> and a gay man notices this. <laughs> uh -huh. My Teta text was Saranda Robinson. One chair to another. Sharing frustrations, occasional rewards, lessons learned about being chair, and somehow finding the humor inherent in the most challenging position in the university. My political confabs and commiserations with doctor and someday senator, Lahoma Ramon. <laughs> I do not know how I am going to get through the strangest election cycle ever without them and without you. Number three, the sweet satisfaction of a class gone well. Number two, the sense of teamwork and accomplishment when collaborating with colleagues to solve a student's problem, to develop a course, to revise a curriculum, to devise and implement a research study. There's nothing like it. And number one, the privilege of witnessing small miracles on a regular basis. Students, those are your miracles. You making huge and often unexpected leaps in personal and professional development when you are inspired, when you find your passion, when you embrace who you are. And when you tap into strengths and gifts that you might not even know you have, but that will serve you and the communities you work with very well from here on. Okay. Okay, that's it. Thank you. I love you. 
Y'all come see us in May. <laughs> Thank you all so much for